Alright folks, we've returned. Thanks to Nicola, Serena, and A for the reports. So let's start case number two of Mysteries of the Past. Slash and burn. Matthew, fire is spreading through the city. The Concordian Flying Squad has been called on to help evacuation efforts. Chief Wright wants you and Mr. Isaac Bontemps to go to Monk Street. As, as a senior investigator, I'm sure Bontemps will be a valuable partner. Judy calls, Marshal Matthew. Although I do so dread getting soot on my clothes, let's, let us head to Monk Street. That's a big one. There. He brushes against her left sleeve, exactly where the sweatshirt we found his burn marks. So Jolie was there. Or the sweatshirt was. Theoretically, Jolie could have been hiding it for a girl who wore it that night. Come on, come on. We still can't prove it. Oh, boy. I really hope that's not Daisy. Although I can't recall if she was uh, the one who had the pigtails. I guess we'll find out. It's good to know I'm the first one who gets the first crack at this. This fire is raging out of control, but it seems everyone is evacuated already, thank goodness. Except this poor creature. We'll have to evacuate her to the morgue. You recognize her from your first investigation, Matthew? So the poor girl was an immigrant called Harriet Patrick. Oh no, I thought she looked familiar. But you're right, she was not killed by the fire. These are stab wounds. This is murder. You're saying this headkerchief belongs to the victim? It appears to have been stepped on. Who could have been so callous? Excellent point. It must have been the killer. Perhaps you could dust this cloth and see what they left behind. I believe you had met Miss Patrick's cousin. By all means, we should inform her of Harriet's passing. With the streets already evacuated, there is nothing stopping us from getting on the trail of this nefarious killer. We'll start the autopsy now, and I'm going to get some stars, so sit tight. Okay, I got myself nine stars. Why don't we examine the neckerchief, the hand headkerchief first, I should say. There we are. Shoe print. You were able to uncover a shoe print from the victim's headkerchief. Capital fine. Let us take the shoe print to Viola Pemberton, post haste. We have to be sure everything we're saying is totally the truth. Oh, no, Miss Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking. Three hours? And let's tell Mary Patrick. Miss Patrick, I'm afraid we have some bad news for you. Your cousin Harriet was found murdered. Murdered? I can't believe it. This is horrible. Oh, her cow will be beside itself. If I could find the beast, that is. That is a minor concern to us, Miss Patrick. Can you tell us if Harriet had any enemies? Well, she'd only just arrived, you see, but she told me she'd met with some rich fella for a job as a maid. What was this person's name? Oscar something with a T. I'm sorry, I can't remember. 
Very well. Now, Miss Patrick, I enjoin you to go to safety. Fires are unpredictable and no street is safe. Matthew, we ought to visit the house Mary Patrick mentioned. We could learn more. How do I know which house? You're clearly a new arrival to Concordia. Oscar, something that begins with a T, is the one and only Oscar Trefusis. He's a well-known scholar and one of the richest men in Concordia. Let us request an interview. Mr. Trefusis, my name is Isaac Bontemps of the Concordian Flying Squad, and this is Marshal Matthew. We're investigating the murder of a certain Harriet Patrick. Where on earth is my butler? First I have to lower myself to open my own door, and now you believe I am somehow the sort of per personage who would be involved in a murder? Her next of kin told us that she applied for position as a maid. Do you remember meeting with her? Harriet Patrick, not ringing a bell. Mr. Trefusis, we know she was here and we must inspect the premises. If you must, it shan't be said that I refuse to assist the forces of order. Do have a look around. if I can get the first star immediately. I like to think I've just about covered done enough to uh, not take another break, but we will see. Butler's glove. I got the first. Was there anything of note pertaining to our investigation, Matthew? This glove must belong to the butler Mr. Trefusis mentioned earlier. The glove simply looks dirty to me, but by all means, collect a sample of that brown substance you believe it may aid our investigation. Glad to see that this thing is working again. I can now share my rewards. under the microscope. There we are. Brown chunks. I suppose it should return to the airship and put the substance you collected from Mr. Trefusis' butler's gloves under the microscope, Matthew. Looks like we will. Another four. Cow dung. Ew. The sample you collected from the butler's glove turned out to be cow dung? How distasteful. How very astute of you, Matthew. If Mr. Trefusis' butler ended up with cow dung on his glove, it means you can finally prove Harriet visited the house. I should very much like to see how Mr. Trefusis reacts when we present him with solid evidence that Harriet was there. And you make a valid point, Matthew. We should also have a talk with his butler. Let's 
talk to Trefusis first. Mr. Trefusis, earlier you claimed not to know of Harriet Patrick. We have since found evidence that she met your butler. I presume she was subsequently invited to make your acquaintance. Oh, you mean that dreadful Irish girl. I'm glad your memory has been refreshed. We understand Miss Patrick came to your home seeking employment as a maid. What? Me? Hire an Irish person? Are you mad? The girl even had the audacity to turn up with a cow. A cow on my premises. I see you're among those who have little love for the Irish. Well, of course. Someone like you would be fine with these Irish people flooding into Concordia. I would remind you, sir, that you are conversing with an agent of the Concordian Flying Squad, and you should mind how you speak. I have had enough. You will, you will kindly vacate the premises immediately, Marshal Matthew. I promise to assist you both, and I have. Good day. Happy to oblige, but understand that we may return with more questions should the investigation require it. talk to Colin James, see what he has to say. Mr. Colin James, we are glad to see you have returned. You are currently in the employment of Oscar Trefusis, are you not? Most certainly. I am his butler. Do you remember a certain Harriet Patrick coming to the house? We found your glove. Do I? The nerve of some people coming to this house fairly well expecting a position. I only spoke to that woman long enough to send her away from this place. And why on earth did you care about her when there's a fire destroying the city? We care, Mr. James, because the young woman was murdered, and your lack of respect towards a person makes you a suspect. I'll let these two run the courses. So for now, this is Matthew. See you then. All right, folks, you've returned. I'm going to get this one while I wait on the autopsy. Hello, Matthew. I see you've met Isaac. Has he challenged you to a game of chess yet? I must warn you, he's a tireless opponent. He'll happily play for hours upon hours. Not unlike your capacity to quote literature for hours on end, Viola, I believe I can now recite the entire works of Marie Corelli off by heart, thanks to you. Then I believe it is a job well done. But back to business. The shoe print you found on the victim's headkerchief was incomplete, so I cannot tell you anything about the killer's shoe size. But the shoe print did tell me that they are wearing Wellington boots. It's interesting, actually. The boots are almost identical to those worn by the Duke of Wellington, hence their name. But unlike the Duke's boots, the latest models have been vulcanized rubber, have vulcanized rubber soles. And the killer was wearing the newer model of the Wellington boot. I take it. Well, Matthew, they had better watch their step, hadn't they? Moment. And this just finished too, so let's get the autopsy results. I hear you've already become acquainted with Richard, our esteemed colleague. He's a man of great scientific knowledge. And you're one of the few who truly appreciated Isaac. Now about your victim. You could see for yourself that she was stabbed. At first the mind turns to a mugging. Someone could have taken advantage of the chaos. But muggers usually only threaten to stab someone. They don't stay and knife someone 13 times. What? Thirteen times? How dreadful! Multiple stabbings tend to be crimes of passion. The killer was very angry. I have determined from her bruises that the killer pulled Miss Patrick, grabbing her shoulder to keep her in place while stabbing her. In doing so, the killer proved to be less than intelligent, for I discovered traces of rosin on the victim. Rosin is a combination of pine and larch resins applied to the bow of a fiddle. You were able to determine that from a small sample on the victim. Matthew, isn't it astounding what modern science is achieving? So the killer plays the fiddle. Well, this person has gotten themselves into quite a lot of trouble now. Matthew, the fire is spreading. Is everyone safe? Well, Harriet Patrick certainly isn't. She's been stabbed to death. Harriet Patrick was murdered? How dreadful! To think we just reunited her with her cousin, Mary, Mary Patrick. Yes, the victim's cousin has provided us with helpful information, and I do hope that the news of her relative's passing has been too much of a shock for her. And it would appear that Harriet's potential employer, Oscar Trefusis, was staunchly anti-Irish. 
Mounty, the victim's last name was Patrick, is that correct? A uh, Miss Patrick is being attacked at the market as we speak. Oh no. I'm gonna be down in two minutes for this, so we'll start chapter two next time.